Okay, so wrapping up our discussion of Singleton, let's talk about the other considerations. And these, of course, are the pros and cons and, and other things you'd have to think about if you're gonna implement the pattern or, or not implement the pattern as the case may be. So some of the good things, it helps to declutter the class and method interfaces. You don't have to pass all these parameters everywhere. Instead, you can access them through the singletons. You can reduce namespace pollution and centralize access to global resources because we're not using global variables. You can extend the behavior by subclassing so you can have a derived singleton that inherits from singleton. You only allocate resources for objects that are accessed at least once. So this is kind of the Liberty Mutual only pay for what you need meme that we've talked about before using just-in-time initialization. And you can alleviate certain problems with global variables in programming languages and runtime environments like C++. Uh, for more information about that, take a look at the paper at the bottom of this page, at the link at the bottom of this page, which talks about the downsides with using singleton in a, and global variables for that matter in C++ programs and how to fix it. Now let's talk about the downsides. The downsides are that this pattern does not address all the limitations, all the liabilities with global variables. In particular, we still have implicit dependencies. We still have reduced program clarity because these singletons are kind of appearing and they're not defined in the APIs and they're yet they're in the implementation code. So if you wanna copy that code and use it somewhere else, you have to bring along all the singletons. And that's what tends to irritate people about this pattern, among other things. If you're accustomed to using global variables and that's part of your, your programming model, your programming style, then it may appear at first glance that singleton is going to have more overhead because you have this additional indirection, you have method calls, depending on if you're using this in a multi-threaded program, you may have additional synchronization overhead relative to global variables and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of subtle traps and pitfalls with concurrency and dynamic loading. Uh, and we'll talk about those when we get to implementation considerations. And in general, uh, there's people who think that singletons are evil. It's kind of the singleton considered harmful. Uh, it, it's, it's the more aggressive form of singleton considered harmful, singleton considered evil. So I, I guess we'd all agree that being evil is better than, is, is worse than being harmful. So if you wanna read all the reasons why singletons are, are evil, take a look at this link at the shown above. Now, let's talk about implementation considerations. First and foremost, do you really need a singleton? And there's some good discussions about this. Um, you know, only if you're gonna use this thing in exactly the same way should you consider making it a singleton. Only if there should only ever be one of these things should you make it a singleton. Uh, should the clients be unaware of the application they're part of? So if the answer to all these things are, are yes, then consider using singleton, but, but oftentimes you don't need a singleton. There's other ways to go. If you decide you need a singleton, then you can make it pretty, pretty easily. You just make the static instance method and you make a static data member or, or field if you're programming in Java, as I'm showing here. Um, but you have to be careful if you do this to avoid concurrency hazards. And these can arise if you don't synchronize the creation of the singleton. Because if multiple threads were to call this simultaneously, they might all come in, all find the instance static instance uh, variable, the static static class variable or the, the static data member to be null or null pointer, and then go ahead and create multiple copies of singleton, which will cause all kinds of problems. One way to do this in Java or in C++ for this matter, or C, is to wrap the entire instance method with a lock. So every call to instance is then locked. But that turns out to have more overhead than you might want, especially relative to global variables. So an alternative approach is to only lock the first time in. And in Java, you can do this with a variety of different techniques using things like volatile variable and an interesting pattern that you can see here um, where you only lock the first time in and after the first time in, you don't need to lock. You rely on some semantics of volatile in Java to do the to do the job right. In uh, C++, it's a little bit trickier because it's not really baked in as well to the language, but there are ways to do it if you're willing to put some effort into it. If you're storing, if you're doing this in Java, then you have to make sure you have the right version of Java to do this trick. 
Um, but you can always use another technique, which is called a, a singleton holder, which is linked on demand. So this is more about Java than C++ at this point, so I won't dwell on it. But just be aware that if you use singleton in multi-threaded programs, it can get rather tricky in a hurry if you don't know what you're doing. There's uh, another set of issues about how do you delete singletons. The late John Blasides has a nice article about that, which you can read at this link. One way to handle deletions with singletons is to register all your singletons with an object lifetime manager. And this paper that I mentioned earlier, the object lifetime manager pattern paper, talks about one solution that we came up with years ago to handle some of the quirks with deleting singletons in languages like C++. There are lots and lots of known uses, probably more than there should be. Uh, we, years ago, defined a, a cool little template class as part of the ACE framework called the ACE singleton, which can be used to turn any, any class into a singleton and also optimize something known as double-checked locking, which is an optimization for using singletons correctly in multi-threaded programs. Read the link below if you want to learn more about the, the long and sordid history of double check locking, which is something I actually uh, published 23 years ago and, and had quite an influence on certain aspects of the Java virtual machine, among other things. There's ironically only one use of Singleton in all of the Java platform. It's in the, the Java AWT desktop get desktop method. And I think this gives you a sense of, of how a Singleton has fallen upon uh, hard times when a platform as large as the Java platform only uses it once. We use it sparingly in our program for the expression tree processing app for two reasons. Number one, to centralize access to global resources without using global variables. And number two, just to show how to use singletons. So uh, in practice, I didn't have to use it. I just wanted to show how to use it. And again, reasonable people might dispute and argue with me that I should have used it at all, but I wanted to show you how to use it if you need to use it. You can think about singleton as kind of the go-to of patterns. If you use GoTo in your C++ or C or Java programs, I don't even know there is a GoTo in Java, probably not, um, people will look at your code and mock you. So you, you should use it sparingly and be prepared to justify the reasons why you did it. Uh, same thing is true with Singleton. People will mock you if you use Singleton. So be, be very careful on how you use it. I'm not saying never to use it, just use it sparingly.